Okay, what is up, everyone? <clears throat> I'm Dark Side Phil, and with me, as always, is John Rambo. And welcome. Hello, thank you for having me here. Oh, yes. Appreciate that. Yes, yes, yes. Of course, sir. Welcome to another edition of Smart Guys, our ongoing pro wrestling commentary show. I have absolutely no idea what number episode this is, so I can't really say that. 230. <clears throat> no, we didn't get a two. Oh, that'd be crazy. If it's like the WWE where they always say everything's 50 years. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, no matter what it is. 50 years. Of, of 50 years. So 50 years of entertainment. That's right. So, yes. uh, so, a lot to talk about this week. This is the lead into the Royal Rumble, okay? Um, and there's a lot that's going on. Obviously, what happens every year, early on in the year is you get these storylines, starting with the Royal Rumble, that are going to lead into WrestleMania. The road to WrestleMania? Exactly. Is that what it is? That's what they call it. And uh, I guess we should preface this by saying, no, we're not going to WrestleMania this year. We were there last year. That's once is enough for me. I don't know about you, John. You, you know. uh, I've gone twice. That's every, right. You were uh, at, what was it, X8 you went to? Ten. Ten. That's right, ten. And Twenty-nine. Every 19 years, I will go. <laughs> every 19 years. So I will return in 19 years. Wow. Hopefully the company still exists. <laughs> It'll be Triple H and Steffi's kids running it, I think, at that Probably. At that point. Or wrestling in it. One or the other. It'll be the, yeah. Well, Triple H will probably still be wrestling in it. Oh, my God. And maybe, the, yeah. So we'll see. He'll, be, he'll do the Vince walk? No, Vince will be around till he'll be like a cyborg. Oh, my God. A cyborg Vince. Cyborg in a, in a wheelchair. Yeah. So, uh, all right. So, we got a lot to talk about. The Road to WrestleMania beginning. And uh, some speculation, some things we want to talk about. One thing we do want to preface is that later today we will be simulating... The Royal Rumble pay-per-view in WWE 2K14. Uh, and we'll be doing some little additions, some fantasy-style stuff like we always do. So definitely, whether you're watching this on Twitch TV or you're watching this on YouTube, uh, check that out. Here it'll be on Twitch on this channel. On YouTube it'll be on my channel, DSP Gaming, where I put up my gaming footage, okay? but uh, <clears throat> So this week, finally, big returns, big lead-ins, and uh, I don't know. For me... It's kind of leaving a bad taste in my mouth, at least overall, because it's it's you're supposed to be leading up to the biggest stuff for the Rumble. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm sorry for WrestleMania, but for the past few years, it just seems to be let's just bring in as many people as we can just to, for WrestleMania, and then after that, we'll go back to business. You know? Yeah, it's more of like a WrestleMania is like more of like a nostalgia tribute show in some respects. You right, know? try to get back remember, to those people who don't watch all year. Remember the Undertaker? He's look at him. He's here. Here's this other guy from the past. Um, that's pretty much. <clears throat> Yeah, you're right. It's pretty much how it's here. it goes. Triple H will come out for you know once a year. And... Right, 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 right. Yeah, it's uh, that's what it is. I mean, you, you can like it or hate it. I guess it's a matter of opinion. But I, you know, I like to see more of like the guys that are there and working hard all the time that are one superstar of the year last year. Right, exactly. Maybe that guy gets to be in a prominent position on the card. Or... And we'll talk about that because that's a big thing I want to talk about this week. How where Daniel Bryan is in regards to everything, and we'll get to it. But I don't think it's very, you know, it seems to be very predictable every year this time of year. I think the last um, couple of years people have been able to f figure out the Rumble winner and the right. the whole the whole card on WrestleMania, right, and who's right, gonna, right. you know, who's going to win. And right. I am prepared now to, to give you my predictions for the card. Whoa, whoa. And we don't have to do it right now, whoa, but I'm just whoa. saying uh, I'm prepared on. if needed be okay. to give you not only my predictions <clears> for <throat> the card, but the winners of each match. <clears throat> You should not be able to do that in January. Right. Exactly right. Not so. good. All right. So let's talk about Raw. Let's talk about what happened on Raw in regards to a big return. Raw opened up with, uh, <clears throat> you know, Randy Orton <clears throat> confronting Triple H and Stephanie in the ring. Saying he's very upset about everything that's been going on. Why are you bringing back Brock Lesnar? Why are you bringing back Batista? Why are you doing all this stuff? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, he's a complete coward heel <clears throat> champion, basically. Right. Doesn't really make sense because he's been there for like 10 years. He's a multi-time champion. He's beaten a lot of people. But now he's a coward. He doesn't want to defend the belt ever. And that's the character that we have as our champion. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> as he's doing this big promo, Batista makes his big four-year, you know, he's yeah, been gone, know. return to the ring. And immediately, you're like, yeah, it's Batista. The music hits. Yeah, the pop was real big at first. And this guy comes out. You're like, wait, who is that? What? So well, the reason that the reaction was like this is because Batista, for whatever reason, I don't know what he was thinking, decides to come out in an incredibly slimming track jacket and skinny jeans. So basically he comes out and everyone's like, why is he wearing women's clothing, you know, on the way to the ring? And he's also, his head now is completely shaven. Remember, he used to have, like, at least stubble? Completely shaven, wearing sunglasses. So, basically, my best comparison, he looks like a combination between The Rock and Pitbull. He really does. That's, a, that's what he looks like. 
He looks like a guy that's like going to have like a like a like a go to a cafe, have a cappuccino, and yeah, like, and like Greece on like a beach or something. I expected him to come out with like a laptop and a, you know exactly like yeah. a latte. It doesn't look like a guy that's coming in like to <laughs> to fight. I'm like I'm coming in to destroy the roster <clears throat> and uh, make a huge impact on on the on the wrestling world that I'm here to destroy and change the face of the company. It's just like right. Oh, yeah. very very and, uh, odd. The the pop was huge at first, but then it. It, it fizzled. Done. It was done. As soon as he hit the ring, people were very confused. They're like, "What? You know, what is this?" And it seemed like when he was once he was in the ring speaking, it, it's like, "Oh, it seemed like he uh-huh. never left." It was just another thing, another know? standard promo. Because the thing is, it's just Batista. I don't mean to put him down. It's just it's not Rock. It's not Austin. It's not uh, one of these guys. That's it's just Batista. <laughs> and they're, they're making it out like it's like a, this amazing right, event. An amazing return. But it's Batista, the guy's he's okay. He was never like amazingly great. I mean. You know what is he? He's in the ring. He does a couple power spots. <clears throat> his his best workers play was when he was a heel. He's not gonna be doing that now. Um, it's Batista. It's it's what it is what it is. The thing for me is like they didn't really put over the character. Like you don't know who he is unless you've watched previous just go, oh, shows, right? So for me, I'm thinking I was thinking of the mindset of an outsider. So you don't know who this guy is. The first thing you would say is, is that the Rock? Because he has a look similar to the Rock now. And he's like, well, okay, that's not the Rock. Well, why isn't he singing? Well, that's because it's not Pitbull. It's like, so who is this guy? You know what I mean? The like, thing with him is, like, he got his his push because guys mm-hmm. left. You know, that's, like, how he came about. Right. You know? Like, when Lesnar left. They, Lesnar we, left, we and that was the, the era guy. of Batista and Orton both got pushed because when we Lesnar need a, left. we need a big jack dude. And right. Need, okay, Batista's the guy. He looks good. But now he's he's old. <clears throat> he's smaller than he used to be. And then, and um, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But. It's bizarre. It's bizarre. And, and here's the thing. Because, like, I'm put, I don't mean to put him down like he sucks or anything like that. My issue is not him, like, he shouldn't be there, because, like, yeah, he does bring something to the table, and he's good, and people like him, but the position they put him in, that's the issue I have, where he's going to be, like, the guy, mm-hmm. and that's insane, because he's, again, it's Batista, he's not great, and there's guys that are great that they're, that they're not utilizing on the roster, we've right. been there all year. And so, that's what we're saying, the people who support the company, who make the company, you know, survive all year, are not the people that they push at WrestleMania, and it makes no sense, from, from someone who's a longtime fan who follows wrestling, it makes no sense. Maybe for the person who all you watch is WrestleMania, it makes sense, but I guess that's what they want to appeal to, you know? It's just crazy that a guy could walk in off the street and <clears throat> just be the top guy. Like, yep. and, and have everything given to him, which is going to happen now. Right. Like, I don't know. It's just, just backwards, man. All right, matches for the night. You had uh, The Shield versus Biggie Langston and Cody Rhodes and Gold Dust. And I hate to say this at this point, but the mid card of WWE is pretty poor right now, and when I say that, I mean they're not doing anything with any of them. How many months have Goldust and Cody had these titles and not really done anything? You know what I mean? And not to say that they're not great wrestlers. Every week they're putting on great, great wrestling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. they haven't been in a program. It's just throw them against anyone, and well, we have nothing with, really for them. Now it's like the Outlaws are going to be there into WrestleMania, like they're on all the house shows and everything. Right. So they're back. They're back. Why though? I mean, like I, I don't know. They're this corporate storyline. They work for the corporate entity or whatever. They're really back because they're Triple H's friends, and they go, we right. have a, another run. Look, Goldus got a run. Can we have one? Can we have one, too? And they got one, too. But, again, you don't need to do that. They got these other teams that they're not really doing much And, again, them. I don't think that either of us are trying to say that the Outlaws are bad wrestlers. Okay, In yeah. fact, for their age and for coming back, they're actually good. But yeah. why do you need to do that when you have a roster of talent that was waiting to come up, mm-hmm. and they're all now like, what the fuck happened? You have a roster of guys you can pull from. You have teams <clears> that are already there that you could use. And, like, I feel like the Outlaws are probably going to win the belts. <laughs> right. And as we know, that be the case. as we know, John wishes that Los Matadores would just win the belt. But, you know. <laughs> I just like to read their results. <laughs> I know, it's funny. I'd rather see them win than the, the Outlaws. Come on, man. Mm. I'd rather see these right. guys in 2014. Right. So, it's a, th- it's a six-man tag match. It's a good match. The Billy Shield... Gunn wasn't good when, when he was supposed to be good. The Shield goes over here. And here's, here's another team, The Shield. What are they doing with them? Really nothing. They were in this, like... A few oh, months they, they were teasing. Up. Yeah, exactly. For, they're teasing Roman Reigns is going to... He's the big man. He's going to, you know, maybe leave. They didn't do anything with it. And now they're just kind of back to square one. I'm thinking at the Rumble, maybe he'll eliminate one or two of them. And then maybe they'll do something for WrestleMania. You know what I mean? But they're just kind of floating. I don't, I don't know. know. It's very frustrating. I, I got a lot to say about the tag. There's like so Excuse many teams me. they could have, they had, they could have put together in the mm. roster and do right. different things that are interesting. Well, I'll have the Outlaws come in. Two middle-aged men doing right. the same gimmick from, right. you know, 15 years ago. Now, okay. John, this next one, unfortunately, I think we're both going to have a lot to say on it. So let's get it out of the way. What is it? Daniel Bryan 
Okay. Comes out, addresses what's going on with him and the Wyatts. All right? It's all, it's, I, I got a little to say, it's, you know, so, it's self-explanatory. Isn't right. It? It's, it's pretty much what you said last week. Last week on Raw was the culmination. He overcame Bray, took him out in the ring, had the whole crowd cheering yes. That should have been the end. No, oh, I want to fight him again. No, he's going <laughs> to wrestle Bray at the Royal Rumble. Why? So let me put this in perspective. Well, why, though? The man who was voted by the fans as the superstar of the year, the man who p- basically carried this company in 2013 against all odds, against the, the, the people telling him that he was not the man, but the crowds love him, is now not in the Royal Rumble... You not, could still get in it, but... Not in any title picture. But if he was going to be, like... If he was going to, like, win it, they would be pushing... He's maybe, not maybe in it. Explain it he's not in it. Right now, he's not, yeah. He's not in the Rumble. Yeah. Wait a minute. It's like, wait, are you kidding me? And the storyline's crazy, too. I mean... It's stupid, this well, point. Well, he's saying Come that... On. He's saying that he um, did it on purpose. Yeah. It well, doesn't make sense. Faking. It doesn't make any sense. Right. I don't even want to get into why that... Everyone Basically, knows. it was... Well, we fucked up and we have to go back. Yeah, this. because the real a- reality of it is if he wanted to kick Bray Wyatt in the face, he could have won the match and kicked Bray yeah. Wyatt in the face two weeks ago. Exactly, yeah. Why does he wait two weeks to do it in well, a steel cage? But just, here's the thing. I, I joined him as a trick. I allowed him to attack me many times. And I finally got my revenge on him. But now I'm going to fight him anyway at the Rumble. Right. Why do you need to fight him again? You got your revenge. Right. So why did you even have to go undercover and shit? Daniel Bryan's an undercover agent. All right. It's just real complicated. It's piss man. poor. It's they poor fuck, They fucked up the uh, the story and they, they realized it was a mistake. And then right. they, they're trying to work themselves out of it. Uh-uh. That's you know, that's good. You know, they guess they, they realized that. But um, but it's a shame because now he's not in the stupid. Rumble. So there's no chance of him having a title shot. Why, would he, why so. wouldn't he want to go? I already got, he had his revenge. Yeah, so why wouldn't he want to go for the, the title? Right. I don't know. Keep in mind that he did have a match with Randy Orton the night after Randy Orton became the WWE World Heavyweight Champion, and Randy Orton DQ'd himself so that he could win the match, or, or get yeah, out of the match. And anyway. Then, and Bray Wyatt really has to win. That's the, that's the sad part. But the way that they positioned the, um, the right. storyline, like it, it's at a focal point where if Brian beats him now, then Bray Wyatt's really... Right, no one like, cares about them anymore. He's like really screwed. Right. Because Brian already got the big moment last time where he beat him in the cage, and he's going to beat him in a match too. Now he's Bray Wyatt's done, so they, they really screwed it up, man. They could, that could have been the culmination there. Yeah, and then that would it's be over. Okay. Now he's now he's in the rumble. He overcomes all odds in the rumble. Maybe all three whites attack him in the rumble, and he still wins. You know what I mean? Like they could have had a cool, a good culmination start. Nope, no. Nope. Because you can make the argument, okay, well, Daniel Bryan's gonna be okay the way that they they kind of saved what they were doing, but Bray Wyatt's screwed now unless he has to actually win at the rumble. And now Daniel Bryan's in a, in a bad spot. The bottom line is this: anyone who was saying all along that this plot line with the Wyatts was to push Daniel Bryan. The fact that he's not in the Royal Rumble at this point proves otherwise. Because if you it doesn't even push it to, anyone, if you were using it to build him, he would be in the Rumble. He's not. It's just another way to fucking hold him back. What's an bullshit. outcome? What's an outcome to this where where Bray or him get over it more? There really is. It doesn't exist. It's bullshit. All right, Fandango beats Xavier Woods. I don't care. Uh, Kane comes out. This was pretty bad. Well, Kane apologizes to CM Punk, right, and he says that. Uh, I'm trying to remember what happened here. It's such a weird thing. CM Punk had to wrestle Billy Gunn. It was real weird. Yeah, it's not, it was bad. You know, he beat he beat him, and I don't know what they're doing with it. it basically, the, the plot line is CM Punk versus the Authority, and it's going to probably culminate at WrestleMania. As everyone, I think, has been predicting for months, CM Punk versus Triple H. Let's face it, Triple H wants to wrestle at WrestleMania, so this will be his way to get his foot in the door. <clears throat> uh, yeah, because as we said earlier, it's, uh, you know, All right. it's the nostalgia show. Instead of being like, oh, you, I watched, I invested my time into this product all year, here's like a result, like the culmination of the storylines, and no, it's just, this guy's back, this guy's back. Yep. You know, by the network and watch. And CM Punk will probably do the job again. Okay. He quite, quite possible that he will, because uh, his contract's done again in the summer. Some yep. three years ago. So, uh, I don't know. Depends if what's going on with Stupid. that. Stupid. Uh, Del Rio, Alberto Del Rio goes over Mysterio again. Nothing really to say there except that Batista comes out yeah, to the end Batista of the match. Yeah, Batista came on botched the, the Batista bomb. Yeah, it goes for a Batista bomb and, you know. Botched it up and uh, destroyed Del Rio. Del Rio is a guy that I think is really good, but they give him, like, nothing to do and they give him a, a very stale characters to repeat phrases and things. Right. And I uh, got an old man coming out, <clears throat> destroying him. 
for no real reason. Is this going to lead to some kind of thing? No. It's just just for the hell of it. Right. And uh, you bury him, and you got an old man that's going to be your, your top guy. Congratulations, everyone. Big Show calls out Brock Lesnar. Brock comes at him, pushes him into the corner. Big Show uh, suplexes him out of the ring. See, and that, that's pretty much the end of see, it. See, with Brock, like, Brock actually has uh, something to him, I think. Like, uh, he... Like he's more of like, oh, that's that's like an important guy, a top guy. It's because he's he went, got more of a presence. It's because he left and he did something else besides WWE. But he's got more of a, he lo- he's got more of a presence. He's got more of like a a, a dangerous vibe to him, you know. Hmm. We're like we're like oh this, oh, this guy could actually kill someone, you know. Like there's there's a little more to him. The problem with him, he's not really around, so you can't they can't right put him in a real <clears throat> top position. But um, that, I think there's a difference if you look if you saw the two on there, you see like. Lesnar stuff is almost more important than Batista being on there. Mm-hmm. If you watch when you watch it, so so yeah. So Big Show suplexes Lesnar out of the ring. I don't know why they're still doing this because you know Lesnar's going to win. You know what I mean? You know Lesnar's going to go over at the Royal Rumble, so he'll get a push for WrestleMania. So it's almost like they know that Big Show's been such a joke the past year that they had to like lay it on as heavy as possible in they're the weeks getting, leading up to the Royal Rumble. So you would think that he's legitimate against Brock. He's getting his right now, mm-hmm. and then he's going to you know. I think that match is going to be scary. I mean, like, the matches they had way back weren't really that great, so they, they got to go, like, under 10 minutes, just have Brock just, like, destroy them, and that, that'd be the best thing to do. <laughs> I don't really see people going through ring ring barriers and, you know, shit is going to be, you know, quick quick and devastating. Yeah, ex- exactly. Don't, like, do, like, a 20, you know, 20 minutes. Right, you know, rest holds. Short, and... but, like, high-impact high, high impact short stuff. Right. Know? All right, uh, the Funkadactyls team up against uh, AJ and Tamina. They win. Big whoop. Nothing much else to say about that. The Very Usos nice. have a, a tag match against the Wyatt family. They win. <laughs> uh, it was a Daniel uh, Daniel Bryan attacked Bray Wyatt, which was the distraction factor here. So, of course, the same plot line, you know. Yeah. And then the main event, uh, Kofi Kingston, again wrestling Randy Orton. Okay. Uh, Randy Orton's supposed to redeem himself from losing to Kofi Kingston last week, which didn't prompt him to attack John Cena's father. So here's the thing I want to know about this. There's a lot of crazy stuff with this. All night, they had this camera on the back of the arena. John Cena's going to arrive, and he's going to get Orton. John Cena's going to come, and he's going to destroy Orton. Where's John Cena? You found him. Last time he came I, from somewhere. Last time I checked, like you have to be at work on time. He was—I don't know where he he's was. He's insanely late. Like he—he shows up the last five minutes of the show. Well, what's crazy about it, though? He comes in. <laughs> like where did he come from? First of all, he right. just runs in in full ring gear. In, in ring gear, which is what he—I guess he just wears. <laughs> all, I guess not really ring gear. I guess it's more like actual clothing that he wears. If you're in like fifth grade or whatever. Exactly. But. but uh... He runs like how does he know even know what's going on in the ring? He comes right. in, runs in, right, immediately in. It was a little goofy, man. It's super goofy. It was a Absolutely goofy, super goofy. The camera's all ready for everything. And right. Then, uh, so he runs in, interrupts the main event. So it looks like Orton's going to try to get away. So Kofi blocks him off. Cena tries to attack him, chases him to the back, chases him into a booth, one of the sky boxes. You know, of course, oh, everyone there's a plant. It's funny because they're acting like they're real, real fans. No, those are plants. Those are actors. And finally chases him outside. <laughs> And ladies and gentlemen, we have our first instance of Grand Theft Orton as he hijacks a car. Is that what happened? Yes. I thought he just jumped in one. He opens the passenger doors, ooh, yeah. and he jumps in and uh, drives away. Was, I thought it was like someone was picking him up. No, it was like it's just a random car. He's like opens the door, get out of here, we gotta go. Yeah, he but drives how the, away. But how the hell does the person know what to how do? How the fuck would this is what I mean? It makes no fucking sense. What I thought it was was like someone he knew <laughs> had a minivan, like some some like soccer mom. And he's like drive away or something. But you're telling me he like he like stole a car? Uh, that's what I, it's the dumb. Who right, knows what know. happened? Who knows what it. happened? It makes no sense. He just jumps in a random car and drives away, and and she's like, "Oh shucks, I didn't get him." Really stupid, man. They, like you did the angle where the the family member got beat up. So all you got to do is just you know do a basic storyline where you see it comes out and like, it's not about the title. It's more than that. Now it's personal and I'm pissed and right. Just do that, you know, and then you have the match, you know, like. Guys running around the building, freaking jumping in vans and stealing cars. Yeah, I mean, come on, Grand Theft Orton. All right, and Kofi uh, didn't <clears throat> even give a shit like no about the match anymore. <clears throat> he goes, "I'm fighting the champion." I'll throw this but match away. I don't care. I'll be help you. Uh, I'll be help John Cena. And that's it. Guy. And that's it for Kofi. Goodbye, push. It's over. You beat you beat Randy Orton twice. Technically, you beat him fair and square. Pinned him. Now you beat him, beat him by DQ. Well, no, actually, he lost the match by DQ because Cena attacked. That's yeah, but right. he let him do it. 
He was fine with that. All right. He was perfectly fine I'm with okay Cena losing. letting Cena do whatever he wanted. And then, I'm okay. And then, yeah, now they'll have Kofi come out. Um, I'm the selfless face. They'll have Kofi come out next week. The reaction won't be so big. Like, we tried to push you with these Randy Orton and John Cena things, but you didn't get over, so too bad. All right, let's talk about SmackDown. Um, Big Show and Rey Mysterio team up against the Real Americans, and if anything I have to say about the Real Americans, boy, any push that they had has completely deflated at this point. And it's the WWE's fault because everyone liked them. Everyone said, we the people. You know, the fans still do it, but they never let them even do anything in matches anymore. This match was a freaking, literally a squash. It seems like the fans like Cesaro. They liked him at certain points. And now they don't let him do the giant swing anymore. (laughs) Even they tease it, and he never does it anymore. Yeah. And it's a joke, and I don't know what they're doing, but like I said, this mid-card is such a It's really terrible. Bad. It's and real bad. Speaking of mid-card, the next match, The Miz versus Brodus Clay, oh. and as the match starts, Bad News Barrett comes out on his podium yeah. and talks through the, the match. The match is like a 10-second match. And then that's, the his Miz... name now. that's his name now, by the way. <laughs> yes, Bad News Barrett. On the, his full uh, name. on the website, they took out Wade. Like, it's not Wade. It's just Bad News. That's his name. Bad News. <laughs> Uh, you look at that guy, you, you, you gotta scratch your head and be like, well, this is the best use of this dude. He hasn't even wrestled since he became Bad News Barrett. He hasn't had one match. I don't think he will. <laughs> so he comes out and distracts them. The Miz wins by basically taking advantage. Then the Miz, this is so funny, right? The Miz runs up to the podium, because you know how it's on that, that crane now? He goes all the way, he like lifts up into the to the air. And the Miz like shaking it, and Barrett goes, you can't knock the crane over, you're not strong enough, what are you doing down there? I'm staying up here, ha ha ha, and he hits the gavel, and then they go to commercial. I was like, "What?" There are people that like the. There are people that like will defend the WWE no matter like what they do, but you got. I think I think you'd have a real hard time telling me, or convincing me that um, you're getting the most you can out of Barrett, Cesaro, you know, guys like guys like that, and uh, I mean, you'd have a real hard time making that case, man. I think. Yeah, I know. Like you're getting the most out of what those guys are capable. How of? How can you even argue that? I, I don't know. I'd like to hear it. Uh, AJ Lee defeats Cameron of the Funkadactyls, and if one thing I want to say here, AJ Lee has now officially become the longest reigning Divas champion in history. She overcame Maurice's record this past uh, week or so, and if anything, Maurice, yeah, Maurice had she it. She had long. that, yeah. If anything, the only thing I got to say about this is that boy, did they? What did they do with AJ? Remember, she was the hottest thing every week. She was the, the number one thing everyone wanted was talking about. What's AJ going to do this week? She was involved with all the main event picture. Now she's been the Divas champion, and they don't do anything with her anymore. Like, there's no program. She's got no one she's she's going up against, no rivalry at all. They released, well, I guess Caitlyn wanted to be released. Yeah. So she's gone. They're not doing anything with Natalia. Natalia lost twice. She's not in the title picture anymore. And they've got no one to be in the title picture, so there's just no matches anymore. That well, we mean got uh, Emma, who keeps... Oh my god! Sign. Yeah, every week. She- that she. I've got to sign. You see, we're in trouble with that, because like they get, they have like okay, let's have her come out with the sign. But you can only how many times can you do that before you know people are just like, I don't care anymore. You know. Well, the thing is, several times already. The thing is, they're like, oh, NXT. You know, it's she's, coming on, to the, she's on NXT. Coming, yeah, it's, yeah. And they're trying to obviously promote NXT, but then they don't ever talk about it again. You don't know anything about it. You know. But if you just keep doing the same thing over and over again, where she's just in the crowd with the sign, you're like, well, the first couple times, like, okay, who's this? That's interesting. Right. By like the tenth time, you'd be like, "This is stupid," and this this character's already dead before she ever got in the ring. You know, that's the, that's the <sighs> thing you can't do. All right. Next we have Rybaxel versus Los Matadores. Los Matadores. And what a match this was because it was just chaotic. There were like bodies flying everywhere, and then all of a sudden it ends with just Axel kind of getting a, a cheap pin, a quick like roll up pin on one of the Los Matadores, but. As they're playing his victory music, right? He gets the pin, leaves the ring, turns around, and freaking El Torito jumps on him. They immediately stop playing the victory music, and they start playing the Matadors music like they won. It's like, what? No, you lost. Yeah, they're great. It, just, it didn't even they make won. sense. It didn't even make sense. They won. It was stupid. Um, CM Punk says he's going to win the Royal Rumble, despite only being in the number one spot. And by the way, we forgot to mention that about Raw, is that the big announcement... Was yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, CM Punk will have to enter from the number one spot because Kane is angry at him and he can't lay hands on CM Punk anymore? But this is his way of getting back. Is that I he's think he's going gonna to go? He's gonna go real deep and then uh, yeah, he'll get screwed. Over. He'll be like Final Four and then they'll get rid of him. Then they'll get screwed, right? And then they'll lead to the you know the door you'll screw him or something, and then they'll right they'll lead to a thing. Uh, I guess the Wyatt family had a promo. Okay. Who cares? 
And then Kofi Kingston beats Fandango. So again, oh, they're pushing him. Yeah, sure they are. The 10 man tag ended in anarchy. <laughs> yes. And then the, the final match of the night. We got good writing on this thing. A 10 man tag. So the teams were, I believe it was uh, Rhodes and Gold Dust, Biggie Langston and the Usos against the Shield. And shit, who else was it? I can't remember. They don't even say there because they're assholes. They don't even say who the hell was in it. If you click on this. There's pictures. You could look. Cody's there? The Shield and the New Age Outlaws. That's right. Oh, okay. So they're having this match, and all of a sudden, uh, it just basically breaks into chaos. It's like chaotic. And all of a sudden, people just start running from the back. It's like, oh my god, Damien Sandow's out here. Wait a minute, this guy's out here, that guy's out here. So the whole ring is full of superstars beating the shit out of each other. Then they play CM Punk's music. He comes out. Now you would think, alright, so to close SmackDown, what we should do is have maybe like a quick simulation Royal Rumble where CM Punk like eliminates a bunch of people. That'll give him a push, right? The show ends. Nothing, no resolution. show just ends. They always do, they used to do that, Dingle. They didn't do that this year? <laughs> No, the show ended. They didn't. There was no resolution. Uh, now maybe well, off TV. No, they were all fighting in the ring. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's what they always do. Maybe that. off TV, CM Punk did did like eliminate people, and then they played his music again. But okay, he comes out. That doesn't mean anything. Like have him eliminate yeah, some people, always, or you know. That's the classic ending they always do before the Rumble, where like the ring's full of guys. Yeah. Like, Who's gonna win the Rumble? They Today. always do it. You're right. Oh, tune in next weekend. So that's it for the Royal Rumble. So John, first of all, yeah, let's talk about the Rumble. Let's okay. talk about the matches. Okay. You got Big Show against Brock. Well, Brock's going to win Is that. there any chance that Big Show could win this? Absolutely zero. <laughs> I love that. Uh, it could be fun if it's like 10 minutes and they yeah they just go balls to the walls for 10 minutes and then that's it. If it goes longer than that, if, they, if they're resting and laying around and you know doing normal Big Show shit, right. it's going to be bad. Um, I believe it's the New Age Outlaws against uh, Cody and Goldust. For the I think they might win. And that's, that's win? sick. And the, the thing That's is, sick. I could see it too, because like I said, they haven't been doing anything with Cody and Goldust. So if the New Age Outlaws win, it at least gives them something to do. It gives you know them something I mean? to do, but they could be doing something better than that. I agree. Um, Daniel Bryan against Bray Wyatt. Oh, jeez. I don't, I don't even know. care. I don't care. Because the match is know. pointless, and <laughs> and Daniel Bryan should be in the Rumble, and he's not. So I, I hate to pointless. say this, but Bray really has to win, because he uh, is in danger if... Um... Of being, you know, hurt big time if he did, if he doesn't, uh, you know, right. The future we don't care about him. Again. The character, the problem is the character wasn't established well enough before this angle began. Right. If he was like this guy, he beat everyone. He's manipulating all kinds of people. And, oh my god, this guy's, you know, there's something to him. Right. But so far, what has he done? Right. He had a bad match with Kane. He talked a lot. He he thought Daniel Bryan was part of his group, but everyone knew he wasn't. And then he turned on him and beat him up. I mean, so he really needs to win and and. But Brian doesn't need to lose either, so it's it's bad. It's just right. a bad situation. What about uh, the title match? The actual title match of Cena and Orton? Orton will win. Really? Yeah. Because you think that'll take Cena out of the title picture. There will be no rematch or anything. Do you think it's going to be a clean win? Do you think? What do you think? No, it'll be a stupid and, uh, you know, shenanigans. And I'm just going to the website. Because they're, doing the, they're doing the thing where um, the authorities like, not, oh, are they, are, are they working with Randy anymore? Are they, they're... they're Against him, but then, but then at the Rumble, oh my God, they helped him. Right, right they're right. all together the whole time. <laughs> what a shock! Right. So that's what's going to happen there, and then the Rumble the itself, Rumble. Batista will win. That's, what, that's your prediction. Yes, huh? I predict that uh, CM Punk will get <laughs> probably near the end. Yeah. And then either Kane or someone will come out and distract him, and he'll get thrown out because of that. Yeah. Um. There could be some good. Uh, you know, I still think it's worth watching. Returns. The returns. Yeah. I predict. Here's my prediction. Okay. Jericho will well, be in the Rumble. He's done it the last couple of years. He's always there. I predict he'll be there. Yep. Sheamus. That'd be great. I predict. Uh, there is always a possibility of RVD, because RVD did a lot of good work for them in 2013. I think they've, they're really high on him right now. Not he's high, but they're high on him right now. And I think that <laughs> they would, they'll probably bring him back to do some spots. Yeah, I can see um, that. And there might be something else you never you didn't think of, maybe. Maybe uh, right, an oddball here or there. Or tea or something, or I don't something. Know. Yeah, usually they do that. They bring someone back you wouldn't expect. I expect the usual stuff the last couple of years where like Cody and Ziggler uh, do like a lot of the and work. And Jericho, if he's in it, they do like a lot carry. of the work. But then at the end, they're 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 over. You know, they're thrown out by those guys who aren't as good as them. Right, but uh, you know the guys who are getting pushed. <laughs> exactly. But, All right. Um, um, I'm sure, I'll give I, anything else to say. Oh yeah, Sheamus, like. What's the difference between Sheamus and Batista? 
That's what that's what a point I want to make. Like, why couldn't Shane? Why can't Sheamus, Sheamus come back? Sheamus is and, Irish. <laughs> that's the difference. To me, it's like they're very similar, but Sheamus is like younger <laughs> and better, and he's got a little more life to him. So, like, why does Batista come in? And he's got a lot more stamina than Batista. That's for sure. He really does. Yeah. You know? At this point, he's got a lot more than him. So why does Batista get to be the? Which because he's in the movies and he's from the past, he gets to win and, and probably win the title at WrestleMania and everything. Now, it could be crazy, and the WWE could completely surprise us. I hope so. You That'd know? be great. Maybe Sheamus wins. I'd be like, what? Sheamus wins they the won Rumble before, and they screwed that up. Uh, that, too. When well, yeah, because the win. Daniel Bryan thing. It was the opening match. <laughs> right. A WrestleMania. I won, right. The, I won the Royal Rumble, so I will open WrestleMania. And win in 16 seconds or yeah, whatever, yeah. and it's a worthless match. So Yeah, well, that's actually the, the rumored match for WrestleMania is Bryan and then Sheamus. So that could even start playing out at the Rumble somehow, maybe. Maybe Sheamus eliminate. Well, I don't think he could eliminate him, but if he's a heel, maybe he'll attack him or something. Or I, I don't know. I don't know. He could if they're both. Yeah, maybe Brian's in it somehow, and then he he costs him, or that's a possibility. Maybe Brian. All right, all right, all right. Brian is number thirty as a surprise. Sheamus just comes out because everyone's out, and they're like, "Who could it possibly be at number 30? Everyone's already in this, and all of a sudden he comes out. After maybe being destroyed by Bray Wyatt or something, he like, still comes out. He's part of the corporation or something. I don't know. Maybe. Or... Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Let's talk about TNA Impact. Oh, jeez. Now, I believe you said earlier that this week they had, like, record high ratings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot, I forgot I wanted to say <laughs> that. Um, they had, like, their highest rated show in two years. And my theory on this is that um, the show before this was so bad... That um, it, they were like the talk of the wrestling world, really, right. was TNA, and like how <clears throat> bad this is. Is Vince Russo really back? What's going on? <clears throat> so I think everyone's like, I have to watch this to see how bad it is. <laughs> and I think that's what happened. They had like a huge rating. Right. All right, so let's talk about it. I'm not <clears throat> going to, but this week, I'm not going to go into every backstage vignette because at this point, if you want to see that shit, watch the show. I want to talk about the wrestling. <clears throat> yeah, Gunner versus James Storm. Mm-hmm. Now, I hate to say it, but these guys are kind of similar. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like when you uh, see Storm's about Gunner a, and James Storm. Storm's more of a uh, complete package, like his overall. Overall. Gunner's just, you know, let me just punch you. I'm the, the what is he, the modern age Viking, modern day Viking or whatever. And uh, so they're wrestling for, if you remember, Gunner <clears> wore <throat> a briefcase that has the TNA title shot in oh, it. Oh, wow. Where did they get that idea from? Yeah. That's, that's exactly. genius. So they're wrestling for this case. And during the match. The end, the end spot of the match is so weird. <clears throat> James Storm has the briefcase. So the match is over. Mm-hmm. No, it's not. No, it's not. James what? Storm has the briefcase in his hands. Mm-hmm. So technically he's won the match. Yes. Gunner puts him in the electric chair, drops him onto the mat. James Storm lets go of the briefcase. Gunner runs up, headbutts him, kicks, grabs the briefcase, and the ref says he won. Why? I don't know. <laughs> the match made no sense at all. This is why people were saying Red Russo is back because in the uh, what was the other finish the um, the Saban match had a weird. Well, we'll ending. talk about it. So like this is what, typical his Russo stuff where yeah the endings don't make sense. They're just real convoluted. It, how does that make sense? The the rules of the match is whoever has the briefcase wins. <laughs> James Storm had the briefcase. It's right there. You saw it. It's on video. How can you dispute that know. fact? I'm not sure. That's it, the rules. The match was terrible because the ending had no sense at all. Right? So does, does anything happen to Storm now or he just doesn't win the case? He that's, just doesn't win the case. Okay. And he, he gets in Gunner's face, he's pissed, and he walks away. And that's the end of the, the fucking angle. It's like, uh, okay then. Now, let's see. I would, by the way, if I was them, I would I would uh, make Storm like the guy I would start pushing. Because he's actually been there from the beginning. Um, and that, that there'd be a good storyline where he's the one that you know beats Magnus eventually, but it seems like they just kind of keep him floating around like you know the mid card. I don't like that. <sighs> okay, Austin Aries, Chris Sabin. Yeah, what the hell was this? <clears throat> X Division title. I heard all kinds of things about this. <clears throat> okay, now if you remember last week, we said that Velvet Sky had to be in a steel cage. Yes, rightfully so. Outside of the well, ring, like the animal she is. <laughs> Whoa. Well, Easy. The delicious pigeon pie, as Austin Aries says. <laughs> That's a compliment to a woman, apparently. She thought that was great. Um, because she's been, basically, uh, Chris Saban has been having her interfere in all these matches. That's how he wins. Uh-huh. So there was a vignette where this week she got a package from Chris Saban, and in it was a teddy bear, clothing, and a lead pipe. What and kind of clothing was it? And he it? says, they didn't show it. It was off oh, camera. Right. And they said, bring, bring, this to, bring this to the show this week, is what he says. They don't, like, live together or nothing? Uh, I guess not. They don't talk only on the shows? I guess not. That's the only time that they're together. So, 
During the match, she's locked up in the cage. She has the shopping bag with her. And you're thinking, oh, the lead pipe's in there. So, you know, they're having their match, whatever. After about maybe five minutes, uh, Saban goes to her, grabs the bag, goes in the bag, and there's nothing in there but the teddy bear. Oh, my so he pulls God. up the teddy bear. Like, what am I supposed this? to do with this, right? Austin Aries hits him with an, like a double axe hammer, right? Goes, uh. grabs the teddy bear, goes to the top rope, and does a missile drop kick into the teddy bear into Chris Saban. <laughs> <laughs> then he does the brain buster and wins the match. That's where Pro Wrestling died right there. That wins moment. the match. With the missile missile bear drop Come kick. Come on, man. The teddy the teddy missile drop kick. And he wins. So now he's the next That's just champion. filthy. That's just filthy. That's <laughs> <laughs> like it's just filthy. You feel like disgusted. Alright. Kurt Angle versus Bobby Roode in the steel cage. Was that good at least? I think they did with it as much as they could, but the again the writing is so bad that it just is like give me a fucking break. Multiple yeah. times during this match, <clears throat> Bobby Roode is outside of the cage, on the steps. Well, he doesn't win. About to hit the floor, and Angle uh, grabs his foot and stops. Oh, uh, so him. they do like the close, the, the like from the you know the eighties, right? The slow crawl. Now the- you and if you remember, usually in a steel cage match, there aren't stairs leading to the cage. This is the door. No, in this match, they put stairs so they could do this angle. <laughs> they could do this spot a hundred times. Okay, so in this match, Angle does a, his top cage moonsault. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Misses. Yeah. But he does it well. And it, yeah, he used to do that. I think yeah. he finally figured out how to do it safe. Because when he landed, he finally landed on his side, which is what you're supposed to do, not he did a, on the uh, face. He did a 450 splash once, which is pretty, <laughs> just pretty weird looking. That's funny. Yeah. So he does that. You know, everyone's doing their spots. They're really slamming each other into the cage or whatever. But it just it's so dumb because the door's open. Rude is on, like, his hands are on the floor. Yeah, it's But dumb. I can't get my feet on the floor. They go face foot first, asshole. Like, why are you crawling like a dick? Just run out and jump. Yeah, uh, like, what are you doing? Uh, so they keep doing this angle, uh, or this spot, sorry. Uh, angle keeps grabbing his foot, putting him in, in, you know, the ankle lock. And then it finally ends where Angle is climbing the cage, and Brood is crawling down the stairs, and Angle just happens to jump off the cage and hit the floor first. So Angle wins. Finally, he's overcome the months of you know losses to to Bobby Roode. And even though Bobby Roode beat him four hundred times, this one win eclipses all of that, of course. And now Angle can now be inducted into the Hall of Fame. Oh, really? But he's not. But you know they're saying now oh. he's worthy to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. He's proven his worth, and he can do it. It's so stupid. But we'll talk about the Warrior Hall of Fame too, by the way. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Before we didn't we get, before we get out of here. We didn't mention that last week. Let's talk about that quick. So oh, we're doing that now. Ultimate Warrior. That was the main event. Really? No, that wasn't the main event, but we'll just get out of the oh, way. I'll do it now? Okay. Ultimate Warrior is going to be in the WWE Hall of Fame this year. He's the first nominee. Okay. <laughs> well, here's a, I just want to say something about it. Like, oh, no. I don't want to talk about the Warrior. Oh, well, I'm not, it's not so much about him, but like, I feel like he is deserving. I think he's... Uh, if you look at the history of that company, like, during his like insane prime, he was probably one of the most over characters he ever had in the mm-hmm. history of the company. Mm-hmm. So he belongs in the, in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, sure. But this really, like, to me, tells me some things about the Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. If you remember a couple of years ago, they made a, a DVD burying him, right? How bad he is. He's terrible. They made shit up. They lied. They said that um, when he came on Nitro, the that's when they lost the war. Because the, it was actually the, one of the highest rated Nitros ever when he came out. Huh. So they, like, just blatantly lied about things. And the only reason they made that DVD is because the Warrior wouldn't work with them. He wouldn't sign a contract. They wanted to make a good DVD about him. They wanted to do Hall of Fame type stuff. But he didn't do that. So we got to bury him. But now he'll sign the contract and work with them. So, oh, oh, he's great and he's amazing and we love him. So it tells you, like, what the Hall of Fame is. It's basically not who are the best guys right. that should be in it, who will work with us, who will sign contracts. It's their PR shit, right? And, then, and every guy that's in the Hall of Fame does have to actually sign a deal and that they own, like, they can only do certain things, blah, blah, blah. So mm-hmm. I know it's, it's telling there. So they, I don't know if they like the Warrior or not. That's what, I don't understand this. Do they love the distraticity? Are they waiting for the spaceship to take him to a higher plane? They love <clears throat> if he'll sign their contract, yeah. Okay. If he does it, then we got to make a DVD burying him and saying that he's, <clears throat> uh, he's, he's an abomination and terrible. And now that he's in the Hall of Fame, of course, he'll be showing up. You know, he'll be... Oh, because he's, yeah, he's got the deal. Yeah. He, he signed up for a certain amount of appearances, whatever it is, and then, you know, when a couple <clears throat> years, they'll go south again, they'll be hate him and you know, whatever, so... I don't know. Right. All right. Uh, Samoa Joe versus Rockstar Spud, another stupid match, right? So, it makes no sense, because why would you have this match? Dixie's like, we need to do something to stop Samoa Joe, because Samoa Joe said that he's going to be in Sting's corner tonight for the title match. And so, what does she do? Now, keep in mind, 
two weeks ago when AJ Styles had his title match, right? She had everyone attack everyone in the back. Joe, remember they destroyed his leg with a wrench? What's her plan <laughs> no, this week? Have Rockstar Spud wrestle him because that's equivalent. Yeah. So again, bad writing, right? Of course, the match is terrible. He gets squashed. So what did you expect? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. terrible. Well, All the right. character should get squashed, though. But, like, he shouldn't be on as much as he is. Right. All right, the main event. The main event of the night that everyone was waiting for, Magnus versus Sting. Mm-hmm. This is technically a rematch from Bound for Glory, by the way. For the TNA title, if Sting loses, he's fired. <laughs> His contract is, is eliminated, he's fired. This is... And I said this to John earlier because John didn't see the match. I couldn't no, believe what I was I seeing. Not, I will not see it. It's the same. I, I'm shitting you now. The same match from two weeks ago with AJ. So yeah. here's what happened. Vince Russo only knows one match. They start That's the match, the match off. You could do. It's a legit match. All of a sudden, it's by the way, it's a no DQ match for absolutely no reason. Okay. Well, this is what they can do all their bullshit. All of a sudden. A hundred people start coming out. The bromans and, you know, bad influence. Everyone. Everyone's coming out. Joe's there in the corner of Sting. So Joe starts attacking them all. Of course, he can't beat seven people at once. So they start attacking Sting. Then all of a sudden, Joe fights back. And it becomes Sting and Joe versus everyone. Just like it was AJ and Sting versus everyone two weeks ago. And it ends up another numbers game. Okay. And identical to the AJ match. Bobby Roode comes out after Joe has been fought, fights everyone off and goes to the back. Bobby Roode comes out and basically hits Sting with a move, and then Magnus gets the pin. It's the same match. Like, I don't know if you, no one can dispute this. It's the same match. That's the only match that Fitz Russo knows. Like, that's the only one he could do. Why would you want to watch it? It's the same fucking match. And so now Sting's supposedly gone. I don't know if he's going to have, renew his contract. He always does. Or what's going to happen you know, this here. Is always, every year, it's the same thing. It's but always... now, so now what is it? So now next week, Joe and Angle will be there. We're angry that this happened. All right, well, Joe's going to get a title shot. Then the week after, that'll be Joe versus Magnus with Angle in his corner. And everyone will come out. It'll be no DQ. Like, how many times are you going to fucking do this? The Magnus characters, they just destroyed him. He's got no, oh, he's awful. He's got no hope. He's an awful generic I, heel. And you know what's funny? They're going to the UK now. Right, he would probably be like you'd be he- hyped. he'd be like really over. Right, but no, they they've destroyed him, so he's probably not gonna you know they're not gonna take advantage of that. It's terrible now. And, yeah, uh, I don't know. I got no faith in them anymore. It's, uh, I don't even know I'm what they're gonna there. do. Like, what are they gonna do now? With with, with uh, they have no uh, no Jeff, he's gone. At well, least he'll for now, well, he'll be back, but he's gone for now. No AJ, but we know you know he might be coming back. Uh, I don't know <clears throat> if he does come back. It's not gonna be for a very long time. He's got. He's doing nothing right now. He's in. R- well, let me take that back. He's in ROH right now. Yeah, he's he's, he's booked, making other appearances. He's you know. booked in um, ROH up until uh, April or May. So could he be in the Royal Rumble, John? No. Okay. No chance. No, because no you see, he would get over if he came out. The fans would would the fans would, would cheer himself. for him. What the hell? And he would trend on Twitter, but we can't have that because he was used to be in TNA. It would seriously be the can't. biggest the biggest Rumble ever. Number 29 is Daniel Bryan. Number 30 is AJ Styles. Yeah. And now you've got CM Punk, Batista, AJ Styles, and freaking Daniel Bryan as the final four. No, Phil, because he was in TNA, and if we put him over, <laughs> then we're, we're putting over another type of wrestling company, but we can't do that. That's why we bought WCW <laughs> and made everyone look like shit. That's right. And lost millions of dollars ourselves. That's why we had Stone but Cold look- Steve Austin beat up Booker T in a supermarket with pizzas. <laughs> No, AJ's in uh, <laughs> AJ's in ROH, and uh, the match hasn't aired on uh, TV yet. I'm looking forward to it, and the matches he's gonna have there are gonna be great. It's it's, uh, it's good wrestling, and uh, I'm looking forward to everything he does there. And you want to? What do you think TNA would be doing with him right now with this crazy storylines? <laughs> I just don't know anymore. It's it's so. it's pretty nuts what's going on with TNA, and uh... and the sustricity of the Warrior. So there you go. <sighs> All right. So thank you, everyone, for tuning in to Smart Guys this week. Again, I want to remind you, in fact, we're probably going to start setting up right after we stop recording here. We'll start setting up for uh, our simulation matches. We're gonna, a lot of stuff we're going to set up, downloading custom wrestlers. But we're going to be simulating the Royal Rumble pay-per-view in WWE 2K14 on stream and also uploading those videos to, to my YouTube channel, DSP Gaming, uh, later today. So definitely check that out. And uh, I want to say this. I'm... I've been thinking about it. There's an incredibly strong chance that I will be watching the Royal Rumble. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> okay. And if I do, 
what I'll do is I'll watch it live on Sunday night, and I'll probably be in my stream chat here on Twitch. So Twitch TV slash Darkside Phil, and I'll be chatting it up with you guys if you guys are also watching the Royal Rumble live, okay? So that's probably going to happen tomorrow night. Uh, if anything happens and there's extenuating circumstances, I'll announce it so you know not that, you know, oh, it's canceled or whatever, but... That's how it's looking right now, because Sunday's usually a shorter day for me. I do stuff with my parents, so probably as soon as I get home from dinner with them, I'll do the weekend preview and then jump right into the Royal Rumble, all right? So that's what's looking, um, and we'll be back next week, as long as weather permitting. There's no freaking snow, hopefully. Uh, next week, we'll be back with the results of the Royal Rumble, whatever the hell TNA thinks they're going to do with their company. And, uh, yeah, and uh, for those of you who have been wondering... Uh, yes, there will be Mario continuing next week. Just I know most people watching Smart Guys might not care, but some people ask me, oh, you're doing simulations this week. What, well, what about you were doing a Mario playthrough? That's going to continue on next week. Okay. All right, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to Smart Guys. Super Mario will win the Rumble. That's my prediction. Mario will be in it. Yes, right. he will win. Uh, I'm Dark Side Phil, speaking for John Rambo. Thank you very much for tuning in to Smart Guys this week. Appreciate it. And yes. uh, we right. will see you shortly for the uh, Pay-Per-View Sims. Check them out. Absolutely. Very good. See you guys later.